Today on the Take Back Your Damn Life podcast, we are going to be talking about airplane mentality and why you got to put your oxygen mask on first. Hey friend, and welcome to the Take Back Your Damn Life podcast, formerly the Girls Tribe podcast, a podcast where we're all about empowering you to take back your damn life on your terms. My name's Ellen, and I'm a former science researcher turned coach. So basically, I know exactly what it's like to feel like you're living a life that's not yours, because I've been there too. Hell, sometimes I still feel like I am. I'm constantly course correcting, learning about myself, and finding new insights and tips that have helped me take back my damn life and create a life I effing love. This podcast is a place for me to share those things with you. On this podcast, you're going to learn how to get clear, confident in who you are, and get consistent and productive AF so that you feel empowered to get out of your damn head and take back your life too. Think of it like productivity, but not just for your to-do list, for your life. So with that, let's get into this episode of the Take Back Your Damn Life podcast. Hey there, friend, and welcome back to the Take Back Your Damn Life podcast. Obviously, I made the switch to bi-weekly, and then I was scheduled to release a podcast last week, but obviously there was a lot going down in the world, in the country, and out of respect for that and to show my support and to let the voices that needed to be heard be heard, I opted not to release a podcast last week. And it definitely gave me the space I needed to reflect and to grow my awareness and to learn. And I hope that you were able to take the opportunity to do the same. Um, But I wanted to get back on track this week because I really wanted to talk about, you know, you'd laugh because it's one of my favorite topics, but burnout. But I really wanted to talk about it from the perspective of burnout in regards to everything that's going on. Because I don't know about you guys, but these last 10 days have been heavy. They've been emotional. They've been exhausting. And they've also been so damn necessary. But I've really, really been feeling that heaviness. I've really been feeling it in regards to my energy, you know, my engagement, my presence. Like I've learned so much about what I need to do differently and do better. And I'm still learning and I have like a bajillion books. I had a really hard time restraining myself from just like starting reading all of them. But I'm trying to like pace myself, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I've learned so much um, and I've become very aware of what I need to do differently. I mean, I'm committed to doing what I can, but with all that, there's kind of been this endless stream of action items and things to do and content to consume and so much. You might be feeling this as well, you know? And I'm committed to doing that work, but I've had to really get real with myself about the fact that I just can't do it right now. I can't do all of it right now. I want to do the work, but... I can't do everything or I'm going to burn out. And you're probably feeling that too. So in today's episode, I really want to talk about a notion that is very near and dear to my heart. Something that I talk to damn near every client I've ever worked with about. And it's this notion of the airplane mentality. And you might be hearing this saying, what the fuck is she talking about? But you are familiar with this. If you've ever been on an airplane you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so this is kind of how I want to frame it. So you've just gotten onto your airplane and what do they do? They give you that whole safety spiel, that whole safety protocol. And they tell you when the oxygen masks fall, if the oxygen masks fall, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to put your oxygen mask on first. Now, what I love about this in the very, very literal sense, the reason why you need to put your oxygen mask on first is you cannot properly help another human if your brain is under oxygenated, which is ultimately what you're doing if you try to reach over and help someone else before you put your oxygen mask on. So they always say you've got to put your oxygen mask on first. And it's the same thing here. We've got to put our oxygen masks on first in this situation. And the reason why this is so important to do now, even in the context of what we're talking about, these huge, huge questions about white privilege and you know police brutality and Black Lives Matter, in the context of all of that, this work 
to face some very, very ingrained biases that so many of us have. I mean, I'm in a middle class white female. To face these biases that so many of us have, this work calls for the most engaged version of ourselves. And that engagement, it requires energy. If we're going to show up in this moment to learn what we need and want to learn, we need to have the energy to be present in the conversations we're having. The half asleep, burned out, like fucking zombie versions of ourselves, that's not going to fly right now, right? It isn't going to suffice. Not, not this time. So we need to do what we can to show up as the best version of ourselves. So we need to put our oxygen masks on first. Another way that I've heard this explained is you cannot pour into others if your cup is empty. If your cup is empty, there's going to be nothing left to give to other people. I love how Keisha Fitzgerald from the Empower Her podcast, which I love Keisha. Um, I've known her for a few years now. Um, But anyways, one of the things that she says that I love, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here, is she basically says, you've got to fill your cup up so much that when it comes to pouring into others, you're just pouring into them with your excess. Your cup is overflowing so that you have all of this that you can pour into other people. And that's really where we need to kind of be at. That's kind of how we need to approach things right now. And it's so damn necessary right now. I mean, it's always so damn necessary to take care of ourselves. I am not one of those people that says self-care is selfish because it absolutely fucking is not. In situations like we're in right now, in times like we're in right now, if we're going to pour anything into other people or causes we believe in, we have to be at our best. A thousand percent. And it applies no matter what. If you're going to do your best work, you need to be your best self. If you are going to show up for your family, you need to be your best self or your friends or your significant other. It doesn't matter who you're pouring into or what you're pouring into. If you are going to pour into anything, you have to have an abundance to pour from. And that's really what this is about today. So what I really want to leave you with is Three very, very tangible ways to go about putting your oxygen mask on first, pouring into yourself. Each of these is kind of a concept. And then I'm going to give you some very, very tangible action steps and very tangible questions to think about in terms of how you might do this for yourself. So let's get into it. The very first one is give yourself some space. Tip number one is to give yourself some space. And space might mean something very different for you than it does for me. It might mean taking time away from social media. It might mean giving yourself time alone. Maybe you are constantly bombarded with roommates or coworkers or family. Like maybe you got a whole bunch of kids running around. Um, But maybe that means giving yourself time alone. Maybe it means giving yourself time in nature. But it's so important to give yourself space. Brene Brown, who I am a huge Brene Brown fan. I've read each one of her books multiple times. If you've never listened to her audiobook, The Power of Vulnerability, oh my God, it might be my favorite Brene Brown thing ever. She's an amazing writer, but she's a phenomenal speaker. Um, But Brene Brown has talked in some of her previous works about scheduling white space into her day and her recommendation that we do the same. White space for her basically means unscheduled time breaks essentially in your day and how she kind of speaks of it is from this perspective she says and this is a quote from her it takes courage to look at why we're so crazy busy yes there's a lot to do but it's more than that the hard answer the courageous answer is that most of us stay really busy so the truth of our lives doesn't catch up with us we're tired we feel scared and uncertain and we worry that slowing down will reveal white space that is unfamiliar to us when in fact it's from that very place that we get to own the love and joy of our lives. Like Jesus, she's just such a beautiful speaker and writer. And I don't know if that was from a book or if it was something she said, but I love that, that notion that it might seem scary and it might seem unfamiliar, but that is the very, very place where self-awareness grows, where love grows, where joy grows. And so that's really tip number one is to give yourself some space. And so what I want you to do right now is I want you to ask yourself, 
What's one thing you could do to give yourself more space? What does your white space look like? And what's one thing you could do to give yourself that? I've given a couple examples already, but I'm going to give you a few more because why, some space might look like meditation. I love meditation. I do it every day, almost every day, but I love meditation. It might look like walks in nature. It might look like a social media blackout. Maybe that's what giving yourself some space looks like. And I had to be really conscious of that last week. But think about what that is. That one thing that you can give yourself. And you might be saying, well, I want to do all three of those. I highly recommend with all of this stuff, start simple. Just start with one thing. And then once you've gotten really, really good at building that one thing into your life, then add more in from there. I think it's when we try to do the major life overhauls, like incorporate all the shit at one time that we can get really overwhelmed. So pick one thing. What's one thing you could do to give yourself more space in your life? So that's tip number one. Give yourself some space, giving you some ideas, and let's pick one of those things that you could do to give yourself more space in your life. Tip number two is to prioritize your self-care. So this for me, this like work that we've been doing lately for me has really led to a lot of mental tiredness in a way that I really haven't felt in a long time. And recovering from that has required like a next level of physical self-care. It has required consciously cutting back on alcohol consumption because I will admit that quarantine has meant that I've been drinking more than I usually do. Um, but I've had to realize that alcohol right now isn't serving me. It's numbing and I don't want to numb. That's kind of not the place that I'm in. So I've been very consciously cutting back on alcohol consumption. I've also really been prioritizing my workouts, um, my sleep, getting outside, drinking a lot more water, um, eating more vegetables, eating less sugar, which, oh my God, that's another one. Freaking quarantine that has been hard because I have been baking <laughs> So much more. And let's just say once the banana bread is made, it does not last very long in my house. But prioritizing self-care. And that might mean some very, very different things. I'm very much thinking about this from the physical perspective when I say self-care, because for me, just so much of what's been going on lately has just manifested itself in terms of physical tiredness. So what's one thing you could do to take better physical care of yourself? And simultaneously, I'm going to add another question, action step, et cetera, to this tip is when are you going to do it? Because this is one of those things. And really for all of these action steps here, don't just think of the thing. When are you going to do it? This is where like my time management productivity brain kicks in, you know, because we've got to make sure we figure out the when so there's no guesswork so that we have a plan in place. Because when we have a plan in place, that plan tends to happen. It's when it's a what if and something that's an abstract or, oh, this would be nice to fit in. That's when it never does, right? So give yourself that clarity of this is what I'm going to do and this is when I'm going to do it. So tip number one was to give yourself some space. Ask yourself what's one thing you could do to give yourself more space and when are you going to do it? And tip number two is to prioritize your self-care. Again, very much a physical self-care because of all the tiredness that can come with this kind of emotional work. So what's one thing you could do to take better care of your physical self and when are you going to do it? Last but not least, tip number three is to give yourself a release. And this is underappreciated, but really, really necessary because I don't know about you, but all the things that were being stirred up for me, all the negativity, all the media that was just intense, all of this stuff. I had points last week where I just felt like I really needed to get a lot of shit out of my system. And I feel like we use that expression, but when I say it, I legitimately mean get it out of my system, release it in some way. And for me, this is as much physical as it is emotional. Like in the thick of everything that was going on last week, I found that my typical bar workout was just not going to cut it. And honestly, I haven't actually gone back to the bar workouts since that day, since last Tuesday, because I realized that I needed something more, something that was more of a physical release. And I actually tend to, when I'm kind of feeling that, you know, it could be a day where I'm just really, really pissed off 
as well. But when I'm feeling that, I tend to do mixed martial arts or boxing type workouts. So I actually ended up doing a boxing workout. And in fact, the physical exertions of this past week have been much more strenuous, admittedly, than anything I've done since I pretty epically rolled my ankle back in March. Um, I actually went for an 8,000, or not an 8,000, 8 mile, 3,000 foot elevation hike on Saturday that I was massively out of shape for. So, but I've been really trying to find other forms of physical release. And it's been very, very helpful. I mean, it's included hiking, like I mentioned, it's included weightlifting, basically anything that gets my heart rate up so high that I basically can't think anymore. Hence the hike on Saturday, because my friends kind of destroyed me. But there are other forms of physical release. If you're not somebody that's super into exercise, physical release might be things like a good cry or hell, I'll go there, sex, masturbation, (laughs) Those are physical forms of release, and that may be what you need right now. Maybe you just need to masturbate a little bit more. I'll go there. Um, But it also might look like emotional release. Like, in all seriousness, we've talked about the physical release, and I think that's a huge component of it, but emotional release might also be something that you need to build in. And for me, emotional release looks like music, um, like playing the piano and singing, Emotional release, probably one of my biggest go-tos in terms of emotional release is either a really, really deep cathartic conversation with a very good friend, or it might look like journaling. And in fact, it usually looks like journaling. So that's kind of the last tip there is what's one thing that you could do to give yourself a physical or emotional release, whichever of the two it feels like you need more of right now, what's one thing you could do to give yourself that? And when are you going to do it? Because bottom line with all of this, I know that you're probably feeling overwhelmed with all the things you quote unquote need to be doing right now, all the letters you need to write, books you need to read, documentaries you need to watch and actions you need to take. It can feel overwhelming, and I understand because I'm in it with you. I have been feeling this. I have literally have a list of action steps that I need and want to take, but that I just don't feel like I'm capable of taking right now because there's been so much, and the level of overwhelm is so high. But I've been loving some of the content and messaging that I've seen lately about just this because this is a marathon, not a sprint. And I'm sharing this message with you because of these tactics I feel like I've learned over the course of my life and my coaching to give yourself the self-care that you need to make sure that you're prioritizing yourself in this situation because that's what it's going to take. So with that, I just want to kind of quickly recap the couple tips because I want you to be present, engaged, and still doing this work in six months, two years, 10 years, and beyond. So just to quickly recap our tips, first one is to give yourself some space. Second tip is to prioritize your self-care. And tip number three is to give yourself a release. So with that, I hope you got so much out of this episode. I hope it reminded you the necessity and the importance of putting your damn oxygen mask on first because self-care is not selfish and you are going to need it if you're going to continue to show up be engaged, and be present for the important conversations and the important awarenesses that you're going to need to make. So with that, I hope you got so much out of this and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. But before you go, one last thing. If you enjoyed the hell out of this episode, there's a couple things you could do. Podcasts grow and thrive because of you, the listener. You help me and my guests spread this message of taking back your damn life. And so I would appreciate it if you would share this episode. Maybe you have a friend that you think absolutely would love it. You could also rate the podcast, submit a review, or just share a screenshot on your Instagram story so that I can shout you out and send you a huge thank you. Otherwise, that's really it for now. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, friend, go take back your damn life. Thank you.